In this video, I'm going to show you 10 essential Mac keyboard shortcuts that will make your life in Mac OS much easier. I say 10, I'm going to throw in some bonus shortcuts as well. Now, primarily, this video is intended for those who are new to Mac OS or who are perhaps moving from Windows to Mac OS. But perhaps you've been using Mac for a long time, you may still find some of these shortcuts useful or new to you. Right, so let's get started with shortcut number one, which is for copying. On a Windows machine, of course, you're used to using Control plus C. On a Mac, we simply switch Control for Command. So it's Command plus C. And cutting is exactly the same. You would press Command plus X instead of Control and X. Our second shortcut is how we paste what we've just copied to the clipboard. And yeah, you've guessed it, it's Command plus V instead of Control plus V. This works for images, for text, and even for files. Just like on a Windows system, you can use these keyboard shortcuts to copy files. For example, let me show you. I've got this file here on my desktop. If I click on it once, I'll press Command C to copy it. And I want to copy it into my Downloads folder, so I'll just click on that once and then press Command V. And that creates a copy of the file. Now on a Windows system, you can also use the Cut shortcut to move the file, but Sadly, that doesn't work on Mac OS. So you need to delete the file from its original location if you don't want it there anymore. But here's a bonus keyboard shortcut for that. If you just click on the file, press Command and Backspace, that'll send the file straight to the trash. That brings us to shortcut number three, possibly one of the most important shortcuts. On Windows, you're used to saving files by pressing Control plus S. And on a Mac, it's Command plus S for most applications. It's a good shortcut to get into the habit of pressing periodically whilst you're working. Shortcut number four will help when you're quitting an application, which works differently on Mac OS to Windows. On Windows, of course, you're used to just pressing the cross in the corner of the window. If I do that on a Mac, notice I've got my Safari browser open here. You can see Safari up in the menu bar. And if I close this window, Safari, the app, is still open. In fact, using the Command N shortcut for new window, uh, I can open a new browser window because the app is still running. So if I want to actually quit the app, I need to use the quit shortcut, which is Command and Q. Shortcut number five will help you to cycle through your running apps. In the same way that you use Alt plus Tab on Windows, you can use Command plus Tab on a Mac. Hold down Command, press Tab, and we get this selector that shows all of the different apps that are currently running. Pressing Command Tab cycles through them. Hold down the Shift key and press Tab and it moves backwards. So we can cycle forwards and backwards by adding in the Shift key. And here's another great little tip. Whilst you're doing this, just keep that uh, Command key held down to keep this little window open. If I now press Q, that will quit the app that's currently highlighted. Now on to shortcut number six. The indexing and searching functionality within macOS is really powerful, and you can access it through Spotlight using the Command plus Spacebar shortcut. This brings up the Spotlight window. I can immediately find a setting. Say, for instance, I want to change my Bluetooth settings. I just type Bluetooth, and there it is, look, the top result. Clicking on that, that'll take me straight into the Bluetooth settings within the system settings pane. But I can also use Spotlight to launch an app. Let's suppose I want to launch Safari. Command plus spacebar again, just type Safari, and I can immediately open the browser or indeed any other app. And in fact, you can also search for files on your system this way. It's a really quick way to launch apps. It's not the only way to launch apps, of course, on macOS, but great keyboard shortcut to learn. Spotlight is a really powerful tool. You can even use it for doing uh, conversions and calculations. For example, if I open Spotlight using Command Space, if I type three plus three, I'll immediately get the answer six. And uh, if I click on the answer, it will bring up the calculator. I can also use it to convert values. So say, for instance, I want to know what uh, 16 pounds is in kilograms, it immediately shows me the conversion value. Spotlight is a really powerful tool, so remember that keyboard shortcut, Command plus space. Shortcut number seven is for taking a screenshot of your entire Mac screen. You might be used to using the print screen key on your Windows keyboard or perhaps a specialist app for taking screenshots. On a Mac, it's built in and we just press Command, Shift and three. This immediately takes a photo of my desktop, and you see it arrives down here in the bottom right corner of the desktop. Leave it a few seconds, and it saves the screenshot to the desktop. Let's just do that again, though. This time, I'm just going to grab hold of this and drag it straight into a folder. I'll just show you something else you can do. Let's press Command-Shift-3 again, but this time I'm just going to click on the image that appears, 
And now I'm into an editor and I can make changes to that image if I want to. Now what if you just wanted to copy that screenshot straight to the clipboard instead of saving a file? You can do that. It's Command Shift 3 again, but this time we add in the control keys. So Command Shift Control and 3. That's now copied the screenshot to the clipboard and I could now paste it into an image editing app if I wanted to, or straight into a Word document. I've got a Word document open, so let's just paste it in. And there you go. Nice and simple. Let's move on to shortcut number eight. And this again is to do with screenshots, but this time this is about partial screenshots. Let's suppose we just want to capture an area of the screen. So for that, it's Command Shift and four. You'll notice that my cursor changes to crosshairs and I can just drag those across a portion of the screen and exactly the same functionality will happen. It's gonna save a file uh, if I leave it for a few seconds straight onto my desktop, or again, I can click on it to edit, or I can drag it into any folder I like. But there's more. If I do that shortcut again, Command, Shift, and four, if I'm hovering over a window and I just press the space bar, you'll notice that the icon changes to this little camera and it will highlight whichever window I have my mouse over. Now, if I click it, it's gonna take a partial screenshot of that entire window, including the transparency around the edges and the shadow. Here's another little bonus keyboard shortcut. You can do a quick preview of any file by simply selecting it and pressing the space bar. So there's our partial screenshot we just took of the whole window. That's a really neat feature. But again, if we put the control key into the mix, we can copy the screenshot to the clipboard instead. So command, control, shift, and four works exactly the same way. So let me just grab a little bit of the screen there. And that's now on the clipboard. Let's just paste it into our Word document using the Command V shortcut. There we go, really easy, great feature. What about though, if you want to take a recording of your screen? Uh, we can do that too with our ninth shortcut. And this one is Command Shift and five. And this brings up the screen recording options at the bottom. You do actually have access to all of the image capturing that we just discussed, but also we can now record our entire screen or we can record a selected portion of the screen. And if we go into the options, we can also record sound using the inbuilt microphone on our Mac. Really useful. Just hit record to start the recording. As soon as you've done that, you'll get this little icon up in the menu bar and just hit that to stop the recording. And it behaves in exactly the same way as the screenshots we've just been taking. If you want to take that a bit further and record the internal audio of your Mac, I've put some other videos up on the channel which will help you do that. So you can click the link up here. That brings us to our 10th shortcut, and this is Command, Control, and Q. And if you press this, what it immediately does is lock your Mac screen. Now this is ideal if you're in a shared environment and you're going off to make a cup of coffee, you can secure your Mac. It'll need you to log in or use your Touch ID to get back in. A variation on this shortcut is to use Command, Shift, and Q. And what this will do is log out your user account completely. You'll actually get this dialog box come up to confirm. If you don't do anything, it will log you out within a minute. I'm just gonna hit cancel because I've got some bonus shortcuts for you that will really help with editing documents. Something that really frustrates Windows users is that most Mac keyboards don't have a delete key. They only have a backspace key. Uh, and that can be pretty frustrating when you're using something like Microsoft Word. But actually there is a way to do this. So for example, if I just click into my Word document here, if I use the FN key on the keyboard along with the backspace, it will behave just like a delete key on Windows. Useful tip to know. Something else that's missing from the Mac keyboard is the home and end keys. Uh, on the extended Mac keyboard, you do get some keys that work in a similar way, but they're not exactly the same. So I tend to use these keyboard shortcuts and it's using command and the left and right arrow keys. So if I use command and the right key, that will take me to the end of the line. And if I use command and left key, that'll take me to the beginning of the line in Word. Not all apps are consistent in the way this works. Some apps will uh, move forward one word at a time, but for most apps, it does work like the home and end keys in Windows. This will massively speed up your workflow if you've come from a Windows environment and you're used to using those keys on the keyboard. In a similar way, we don't have page up and page down in quite the same way on a Mac keyboard, but you can use command and the up and down arrows to quickly navigate up and down the page in apps like Microsoft Word. So whether you're new to macOS or you've been on the platform for a long time, hopefully you've found something in those keyboard shortcuts which will help speed up your workflow. And I'll bring some more tips and tricks in a future video. Thanks for watching. See you again soon for some more geekery.